If you ever need a getaway vehicle, be sure to hijack an ITT. What's up meta nerds? In today's video we're going to be talking about the Imperial Troop Transport, or ITT, a vehicle that originates in Legends but has made a big comeback in canon. The specs and even the design for this vehicle do differ between Legends and canon, so let's start with the Legends. This vehicle was first known as the Reconnaissance Troop Transport, or RTT, and it was built by Santh Sinar Technologies, the parent company of all the different subsidiaries that made everything from the TIE Fighters, TIE Maulers, and other ground vehicles like the Century Tank. The RTT was 6.4 meters long, about two-thirds in AAT, or just over three and a half cents. It had a top speed of 150 km per hour, or 93 miles per hour, making it 100 km per hour slower than the average X-34 land speeder. Its crew was just a single pilot and a gunner, but in some cases a second gunner would be used. For transport, you could carry up to six troops on these outside racks, which also allowed them to fire independently while traveling. Although you do get the extra firepower, these troops would be open to the elements and incoming enemy fire. The rear of the RTT had what was called a prisoner immobilization unit, which could be used to detain both organics and droids. And for armament, the RTT had this turret with two light blaster cannons. Now the design of the cannon version does differ, where the front is now more squared off, and they add these two extra blaster cannons. And all the cannon versions have transparent steel in the viewports, whereas in Legends, sometimes these just appear to be openings. But what does stay the same is that that turret packs a big punch, and we see that it can be used effectively against land and air targets. In canon, the Imperial Troop Transport, or ITT, was built by Ubrickian Industries, the same people who gave us Jabba's sail barge and the Bantha II skiff. It also gets an official model number now, the K79S80, and its length is 8.77 meters, now two whole senates longer than the Legends version, and about a Jawa shorter than the AAT. It had a width of 4.5 meters, almost two Wookiees across, which is a little bit less than half the AAT, while its height of 3.5 meters was about twice that of the TX-225 occupier tank. The top speed remains the same, and we even learn its weight, 20,600 kilograms, or about 22 tons, roughly the weight of 25 dewbacks. But what's really incredible is this thing's shield generator and thick hull plating. It can take down multiple blows from an ATDP, TIE Fighters, and even the Ghost. All blasts that could punch a hole through most vehicles. But we often see the ITT taking hits without even breaking stride. In fact, even in this scene where the Ghost finally causes it to wreck, the actual armor is never penetrated. It seems like either the steering or the repulsors are damaged can also plow through the legs of an ATDP, or even push aside another ITT, though again without compromising the armor of either. As for its history, in Legends, the earliest we see the RTT used was in Zero ABY, where Agent Marborez is unsuccessful in capturing some rebel rookies. Then we learn that after the escape pod was found on Tatooine by a Dubak squadron, the ITT squad was brought in to hunt down the droids containing the Death Star plans. They found the Jawas that sold these droids to the Lars farm, before opening fire on the Sandcrawler and ordering the Jawas to exit. As they did, the Stormtroopers slaughtered them, and then staged it to look like an attack by Tusken Raiders. The RTT would once again be used on Tatooine sometime after the events of A New Hope. Several of them would be present for the testing of the Omega Frost superweapon. During this encounter, the RTTs chase Han and Luke across the Junlin Wastes, before they end up hitching a ride on something all too familiar to the RTT, a Jawa Sandcrawler. As they traveled along, Luke and Han would spot another sandcrawler directly in the blast of the Omega Frost weapon. This caused everything in the surrounding area, the sandcrawler included, to be flash frozen. If this weapon could work on the scorching hot deserts of Tatooine, then it could work anywhere. And remember that these massive vehicles are like mobile fortresses containing almost an entire Jawa clan. The two Tag Brothers would have a close-up view of the devastating effects of this weapon, but as soon as it was discovered that our heroes were close by, Ormond sprung into action and would board an RTT to give chase. The Sandcrawler containing Luke and Han made a direct course towards Moss Eisley. To lose the pursuing RTTs, Luke had an idea. While Han and the Jawas would drop containers of Skyhopper fuel, he would sit atop this massive vehicle and snipe the barrels, causing a massive chain reaction and wall of fire, and even exploding one of the barrels directly under an RTT. That was enough to break through the armor, and the Jawa were happy to get some revenge for those fallen sandcrawlers. During the Galactic Civil War, we'd see the RTT one more time during the Battle of Trask. These RTTs were actually a variant of the standard version, this kind removed the side racks and had all the troops inside, while also having this extra glass on the side for more visibility. And the last time we see its use in Legends was during the Imperial Civil War in 10 ABY. We'd see the transport being used on Coruscant during the hectic battles between Imperials still loyal to Palpatine and the other Coruscanti that no longer were. 
The RTTs here would be used to quickly transport supplies and troops across the dense cityscape of Coruscant. Now the earliest that we see the ITT in canon was a year after the Galactic Empire was formed, in 18 BBY during the Battle of Dak City on Mon Calamari. Here we see something very interesting, but makes absolute sense given the time period. The ITT was transported to the Mon Calamari capital by LAATVs. Another interesting thing is seeing the ATATs and ATDPs being used in this battle as well, which means they were already transitioning out of the Republic Walkers just one year after the Clone Wars. 14 years before the Battle of Yavin, we see several ITTs used by an Imperial outpost on the planet Kashyyyk. A handful of these came under attack by Saw Gerrera's partisans, the Kashyyyk Resistance, and an ATAT -AT commandeered by Cal Kestis. A few of them stationed at this base would be destroyed by this hijacked ATAT. -AT. In 11 BBY, ITTs were deployed on the planet Gorse to hunt down the wanted fugitives Hera Syndulla and Kanan Jarrus. They were wanted for an assassination attempt on Count Vidian, and they were actually spotted by an Imperial transport, but Hera was able to set off an explosive, allowing them to escape. The most we would see the ITT would be between the years 5 BBY and 1 BBY on the planet Lothal. Given the ITT wasn't used for direct combat, the ITT would take on a number of roles instead, ranging from standard troop transport duty, prisoner transport, and even carrying cargo and food, such as Nelu runs. And when the Imperials wanted to show off their might, you could also find them in parades. We saw them being used to carry prisoners after an attack on the Samar family farm, which after the war was over was actually used by the family to transport their workers. But the Spectres would hijack many of them over the years. One such occasion was during the Empire Day celebration in 4 BBY, where both ITTs and ATDPs participated in the parade. The celebration was cut short, as the Spectres sabotaged the newly displayed TIE Advance model, which was the centerpiece of the celebration. Now on the run, they would commandeer an ITT to make a quick getaway. And that's where we really see how resilient this vehicle is, plowing through other vehicles with ease and really taking on a lot of damage. In the year 1 BBY, the ITTs on Lothal would be joined by the TX-225, yet another repulsor craft, but even more heavily armed and armored. During this battle, Hera Syndulla would commandeer an ITT after being shot down, and use this vehicle to rescue other downed rebel pilots. This transport would continue to be used by the Imperial-controlled worlds until the end of the Galactic Civil War, and so the last time that the Imps used them was during the Battle of Jakku in 5 ABY. But even though the Empire was finally defeated, Remnant forces would go into hiding across the galaxy, and continue to operate with these Imperial vehicles. The ITT was no exception, and we see one under the service of Moss Gideon's forces on the planet Navarro. Here the ITT would be used to transport a squad of stormtroopers to Gideon's target, the Mysterious Child. This ITT has some minor details changed from the ones we saw earlier, and actually more closely resembles the Legends version, with that more rounded front, and the sunken, forward-facing guns instead of those ball mounts. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind-the-scenes stuff. The ITT was the very first toy made by Kenner of something that wasn't featured in the movies. This isn't the only Kenner toy to make a comeback in Star Wars, as the INT-4, MLC-3, and MTV-7 have all made comebacks not only in Legends, but are now a part of canon. The toy of the ITT came with this little informational booklet that gave some behind-the-scenes info on the ITT and some information regarding the Sandcrawler. The variant on Trask was first seen in the comic Boba Fett Overkill, and before making its debut in Star Wars Rebels and canon, its first appearance was in the junior novel Ezra's Gamble, set shortly before the events of the Rebel series. What's really cool is that this toy actually had a prototype that differed from how it looked in the final version. The entire front of the ITT was more ramp-like, ending in two pointed edges. The top-mounted round blaster turret is missing, instead replaced by a turbine engine, and it's said that the ride vehicle at Star Tours was based on this early design. So that's it for the ITT. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support our channel without it costing you a thing, or check out our Patreon. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, ships and vehicles always outlast their faction, and the Force will be with you, always.